J ハット塾。Please hit subscribe. This problem appears at the qualifying examinations for applicants for Japanese government on MEX scholarships 2019. There are two mathematics exams, one for social sciences mathematics A and another for natural sciences mathematics B. This problem is from the 2019 Mathematics B questionnaire. The answer key and the original questions are linked in the description. Problem 1 to 2 of 2. Let IMN be a function of a pair MN of natural numbers that is inductively defined by the following I of M1 equals I of 1N equals 1 for any MN. I of M plus 1N Plus I of M N plus one equals I of M plus one N plus one for any M N. We have to express I of two N and I of three N in terms of N. Then we need to find the value of I of five three. For this problem, we notice that we only have a value. That is numerical if one of the arguments is one. So, for example, if we have one as the second argument, our value is one. If we have one in the first argument, then we also have a value of one. And it doesn't matter what we have on the second argument in this case here and what we have in the first argument in this case. So, the plan is we reduce. The given into, into a form where one of the arguments here is one, like this. So we go backwards. So, for example, here we go from 2n to 1n, and here we have 2n minus 1. And we notice that n minus 1 is 1 less than n here. And so we go further back until we, we arrive at, at a form where we have one on this side. And here we already have one on this side, so this is fine. And the way we do that is we use the second condition, the inductive, the inductive condition. So what this says is that we can get to the next, the next natural number, n plus 1, n plus 1. The value of that is as if we got this value here from the greater between the two. So If I have m plus 1 here and I have m here, what I will get is m plus 1 in here. So just make sure that one of the m arguments is one greater than the other. And the value in the answer would be the one that is greater. So here, m plus 1. So we ignore this. And the other one, n plus 1, it's again the greater between the two n's here, n plus 1 and n. But we also notice that it's interchanged. So here, m plus 1 is bigger than m, but n here is less than n plus 1. And so what this is saying is that if you have this form, you can have this form. And if you have this form, you can decompose it into these two. So let's try that for i of 2n. So i of 2n, let's decompose it and let's reduce this first argument by 1. And so we get 1. And we retain this. Notice that, that that is what we do here. So we can reduce the first argument by one here, and then we retain the second argument. So this bit here corresponds to this bit. And now for the second add in, this time we reduce the second term by one. So n plus one becomes n. In this case, n becomes n minus one. And then we just retain. Whatever we had, we had in the, in the other bit. So m plus 1. So we retain m plus 1. And so we retain 2 here. here. And now we know that this is this. So we just get 1 for, for, this, for this bit. And let's, let's just put that aside for the moment. Let's continue reducing this bit here until we get 1 on this side because we notice that we can make this smaller and smaller until it becomes 1. And we just, Reapply this second condition here. And so, for example, when we go to the second layer, we see that we can reduce this again, one, this one, n minus one, just like what we did here. 
So this one will have a value of one again. On this side, we the two retains two, and n minus one is n minus two. And we do that several times until we get to two, one. Then we just count how many times do we have to do this. So you notice the reduction in the number here is as follows. You have n minus one, n minus two, next will be n minus three, right to one. So how many layers do we need to get from one up to n minus one? Of course, there are n minus one layers. We just count one, two, three, four, five, six, up to n minus two, then n minus one. So there are n minus one layers. That means we have n minus one of these terms, these underlined terms, because there's one in every layer. And finally, we have this other addend here, which is not accounted for, and this exists in the final layer. So that value is also one that is given from this first condition. So if we add all them, so we have n minus one here, the underlined bits, plus one, then we get the following. So here we just wrote it down again, n minus one plus one, therefore that's n. So i of two comma n is just n. Now we do the same thing for i of three comma n. So here we already know two n. So what we did here first is we applied that second condition. So we reduce 3 into 2, we retain this. Then this one we reduce to n minus 1 and we retain the 3. So this bit, we already know this to be n here. And if we do that to this bit again, again we get this. We reduce the 3 to 2, we retain this. Then we retain the 3, we reduce this to n minus 2. Then we do that over and over again until we get to 3, 1. And here we get 2, 2 because the n minus 1 here, the n here becomes n minus 1, n minus 2, and so on to 2. And then we just replace this with, with what we already know. So i of 2 comma n is n. i of 2 comma n minus 1. So we just replace this with n minus 1. So we get n minus 1. That's what we have. And all the way to 2 we get 2. So we just add them, n plus n minus 1 plus n minus 2, all the way to 2. And this bit here for the last layer, which is 1, because one of the arguments is 1. And so we just need to add all these together. So we are interested in the sum n plus n minus 1 plus n minus 2, all the way to 2, then plus 1 more. And this is a familiar sum. This is the sum of all the numbers from 1 to n. And we already know this sum. This is an arithmetic progression, an arithmetic series. So we have 1 half n times n plus 1. This is the sum of this arithmetic series. And so this is our answer for 3n, i3n. Now if we need to find i5n, we just do the same steps we did earlier. So we reduce the 5 to 4, we retain the 3, we reduce the 3 to 2, we retain the 5. For this bit, we can again reduce this to 3, 4 to 3, 3 is retained, 4 is retained, and 3 becomes 2. And now this is a good form because we already know how to compute this. We use this. We just replace the n with 3, replace this with 3. So this becomes 1 half times 3 times 3 plus 1, which is 4. So that's 6, 1 half 3 times 4, which is 1 half of 12, which is 6. So we have 6 here. Then let's ignore this for, for a moment, and let's look at this bit. Now again, we reduce this, 5 becomes 4, we retain the 2, 2 becomes 1, we retain the 5. Now this one, we know this from the first condition, this is just 1. Now this one, this is the same as this here. So we just have to solve solve it once, and now we, we will have a value here if we get to solve this. So let's solve this. We reduce it, four becomes three, we retain the two, two is reduced to one, four is retained. Now this bit is from the first condition, we get just one. Now this bit, we learned this from the previous slide, or rather actually from this bit here. So we just replace the n with two, so you replace this with 2 here, so 1 half of 2 is 1, 2 plus 1 is 3. 
So that's 3. So i of 4, comma 2 is 3 plus 1. And that's what we put here, 4. Then we just have to add all of them. So we have 6 plus 4, which is 10, plus 3, 13, plus 1, 14, plus 1, 15. So we get 15 for this. If you learned something new today, please help my channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for the notifications. See ya!